Hey, good morning, everybody. So I was hoping to have uh, this particular video out to you guys later in the week, um, but uh, and I was going to have my a, a different style of jeeping video. But we'll go ahead and put the uh, um, clip in here for you guys. That the video that I was hoping to have to you guys basically after the end of the weekend was of us wheeling out there um, out in Ocotillo again. And as you can see, the winds there were just crazy. Um, so it's one thing, the winds are pretty tolerable when it's like 10, 15 sustained. But here, when it's like 25 to 30, it just is unpleasant. Um, and, and unfortunately, there were a couple of, there was only two of us in our group that had, a, or actually there's only three of us in the group that had a hard tops. And the other two were really just getting sand dusted, um, especially as we were um, basically pointed east. Then the wind was just coming in the back. Um, but all right, so back to this video. So what we're going to be doing is installing a drive shaft, a rear drive shaft that I picked up from uh, um, Adams. Um, it's actually the uh, second one that I got. And I really was pleased with the uh, first one and everything that came with it. Um, so we're going to go ahead and walk you through replacing the rear one. Now, why am I, repl why am I replacing the first one? And why am I replacing this one? Well, because uh, when I first picked up the Jeep uh, back in November, had a lot of driveline oscillations. So basically at around 60, 65 miles an hour, the uh, had some real uh, significant vibration coming in and that was a sort of oscillated vibration. So it'd come in pretty intense and then go away and come in and go away. Um, and, and, and so we replaced the front one and it went probably 85 percent 80, away but there's still some there so i figured you know i'm going to go ahead and uh um, and, and actually it seems like right now it's starting to increase a little bit so i want to go ahead and just put on what i what i feel is a very good uh quality drive shaft so that at least now i have very strong one front and aft and, and and then anything else that comes up we'll just start you know upgrading as things break and i'm going to be showing you here something that i need to upgrade because uh, i basically took a rock into the rear diff but first, let's go ahead and unbox this and see what's in it. And everything. So this is how it comes when you open up. Comes here with your name on it, and uh, comes with a, a shirt here that they give you free with every purchase. Uh, this will actually be the second one I have. Even the shirt's packed in here pretty well. <laughs> so that'll be the second one I'm wearing. So a little bit of advertisement for them. So when I pulled this from the bag, if uh, you, you like putting stickers on your Jeep, it also comes with a another Adams uh, drive shaft uh, sticker so you can put on the outside but as you can see they got one on they got one here and they also have a, one they put one on every uh, drive shaft so let's go ahead and see um, what this note says all right so basically what this uh, note here is just saying is that there was some after model drive shafts especially on the two-door models which I have um, there might be slight vibrations and it basically it goes into some of the reasonings um, but they just highlight that if you do have some driveline vibration uh, as soon as you put this in there to give them a call and they'll help help you with it so again just the uh, customer service is pretty good with them also I, I, one of the is I'm taking this out I'll just go ahead and talk to one of the things that I liked about them on the first time uh, I went with them is I actually sent them in the wrong measurements and they're like, hey, that just doesn't sound right, you know, and they kind of walked me through. And sure enough, I was measuring from the wrong spot. So um, that was real good of them to kind of have that sort of double check Q&A. All right, so I'll be up front real fast. Uh, one of the things that came with the uh, front drive shaft didn't come with this one on the front one they gave me all the uh bolts and everything to and lock tight and and basically i had everything that i needed to just go ahead and uh, put this on in um, but it looks like i'm gonna go ahead and double check and just make sure i'm not missing it but it looks like i'm gonna have to just reuse my bolts uh, but uh, to be honest the first time i i was planning to do that uh and uh, so no big deal it, but that is different so i don't know if they forgot it or if that it's just what happens when you get a rear one for whatever reason all right, so before we begin, I go ahead, I got, got two blocks in position, got the emergency brake on, and I got the transfer case in neutral. And the cool thing about uh, the packaging that uh, Adam sent you is it gives you a headrest when you're here working on the ground trying to take this thing off. All right, we're now under here, and here's the skid plate here for those of the Rubicon. Here's the stock air lockers. Got to take four of these bolts off right here, and uh, these are 15 millimeters. Let me go ahead and turn you around. And then the four bolts that I got to remove here are eight millimeter.
these on my Fitbit and see how much they weigh. This one is uh, 23.5 pounds. This is the stock one. And the Adams is driving, is weighing, I should say, 22 flat. All right, I'm unsure uh, if uh, the one I previously had was stock or not. Uh, to be honest with you, I think it was the uh, stock Rubicon axle, but you can see this one is a little bit thinner. Uh, both roughly, oh, this one's only about a pound and a half less weight. Uh, so it looks like it's probably a little bit more compact, uh, but uh, this is the uh, heavy-duty extreme version. So this is the uh, best one Adams makes. Um, so I, I still have pretty good confidence um, that this one is better than that one um, because I feel that looks are deceiving in this situation. So what we're going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, clean up the bolts on... Uh, Clean up the bolts in the bracket here on my wire brush, and then we'll go ahead and uh, grab the Loctite and head back under the Jeep and install the new drive shaft. So after going through and cleaning them all, um, and they're looking, uh, you know, for the most part, pretty good. Got them all nice and cleaned up. Um, went in, you know, got in there to the best I could on the wire brush, and they came out looking pretty good. Maybe a few imperfections I might go back in there. Um, but actually what I'm thinking about doing, because after looking at um, these brackets, you can see kind of how they're sort of rusting a little bit. Um, and uh, what I'm going to go ahead and do is... Um, since these were rusted, I'm going to go ahead and drop these in my uh, rust bath that I'm currently doing my uh, thickness planer with. And then I'm going to go to the store and pick up some paint. Uh, and uh, we're going to go ahead and paint these. I know what I think I'm going to do too is I'm going to paint like the tops of uh, each bolt. And I know that that's going to wear away when I put them in. Um, but, you know, we'll, we'll see. we see if we can pick up some pretty good um, paint that will last um, some spray paint real fast. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I'll come back to you guys on the next step. Okay, so I came into the sunlight just to give you guys a good representation on how both of these are looking. So you can see that they're kind of cleaning up, but there's still a good amount of rust. So I feel like if I, I'm going to go ahead and put both of these back in there, if uh, if they're not clean by the end of the day, then I'm just going to let them sit over their night till um, in 24 hours should do it. Unfortunately, that means that I, you know, I won't be able to go for my test drive today, but whatever, I'm going to take the time to do it right. Plus, it'll allow the uh, paint on the bolts to set a little bit longer. And this is what the bolts are looking like. So these are looking really clean. I'm going to go ahead and hit these up with some uh, uh, brake cleaner and, uh, and and then just allow them to kind of dry out real quick. And then we're going to go ahead and uh, prep them. I'll tape up the threads and uh, we'll go ahead and prime and paint. And then uh, we'll just let them sit until we get them get the brackets done. All right, let's send it.
Got an ant on top of this one. These are all ready and dry now to the touch. Uh, and I just finished pulling out the uh, brackets out of the wash, out of the rust remove wash. And then I uh, went ahead and did the uh, wire brush and I got them pretty cleaned up. Um, so looking a lot better here. Both of them are looking pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, hang these and uh, go ahead and prime and paint them. And then uh, I, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get these on tonight, but we'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll see what the time uh, will do by the time I finish everything. All right, so I just got these out of the oven. They had to, the blue uh, enamel paint had to bake for an hour at 200 degrees. So now that they're set, we'll go ahead and uh, bolt it on. Unfortunately, 5% on my GoPro meant that I didn't have enough battery to show you guys the whole test there. So, as you guys saw, at 60 miles an hour, which is where the oscillation normally started coming in, it was all good. I didn't have the oscillation. Went up and got to 65 miles an hour. Again, no oscillation. I was feeling really good. Like I said, I was. Went to the gas station, gassed up. Um, got back on the freeway. I said, "Hey, let me try to do 70 miles an hour and see if uh, and see if, if it's at least fixed up to that point. 70 miles an hour, driveline oscillation was back. And so, unfortunately, uh, it, you know, I was hoping that this would completely fix the entire problem. Uh, but to a certain point, it had, and I'll explain why in a little bit. But what I think the issue is, especially since." Uh, Adams, uh, you know, uh, the company was very upfront that, hey, you know, it might be the uh, angle offset between the transfer case and the pumpkin. I think that's the case. Uh, and, and so the good thing is, is like I was saying, I don't think it's too much of an issue for me because if I can get up to 65 miles an hour, it tends to be usually where I stay. To, uh, to, um, and so I don't really feel that's too much of an issue. So for me, it's technically fixed, but not completely fixed. Um, since I will, at the speeds I drive, I will rarely ever get up to 70 and experience that. Um, but uh, so far, I'm very happy with uh, Adam's drive shaft, especially on the front one. Uh, I don't anticipate there being any issue with this. Um, but if something comes up, I will absolutely let you guys know. Uh, but that's going to go ahead and wrap up this video. We'll just keep testing it out. If something comes up, I'll let you know. So anyways, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you on the next one.